Okay, here's the custom validator I have implemented. So I called it at least one movie. And the implementation is very basic. We just check the length of the movie IDs array. And if it's greater than zero, that means we have at least one movie in this array. Now I noticed a couple of bugs in my code. One is this E here. I moved this code from our previous submit handler. And this E was the submit event. But we don't have this argument and this function. Now, even if I add this here, it still doesn't work. Because when jQuery validation plugin calls this function, it passes a reference to the form, not the submit event. So, in order to prevent the form from being submitted normally, we're going to use a different technique. We're going to return false at the end of this function. So, when submit handler is called, we immediately use Ajax to call the server and then return false. And this will prevent the form from being submitted normally. Also, another issue I discovered was that sometimes the validation messages didn't appear when I clicked the submit button. Now, I don't know how magically they worked in the last video, but in case you have had the same problem on your machine, the reason is we forgot to assign the name attribute to our input fields. So here, name equals customer. jQuery validation plugin relies on this attribute to do its job. Similarly, name is movie. So we're done with the implementation of our client-side code, but let's take a look at our JavaScript code. We have a fair amount of JavaScript code, and currently there is no structure. We have dumped all the code inside document.ready function. And while this is not terribly bad, but code like this can become smelly sooner or later. So there are a few techniques we can refactor this code and modularize it. And that's something I'm going to talk about in the second part of this course. I will show you how to refactor existing code to improve separation of concerns and maintainability. Currently, the issue we have is not only on the front end. As an example, look at this action we created in new rentals controller. This is what we call a fat action. It's hardly fitting on one page. So in the next part, I will show you how to refactor this code into an object-oriented design where every object has a clear responsibility. This way, you will not end up with fat methods, whether on the server or on the client. Now, one more thing before we finish this lecture. When we successfully record rentals, we need to clear the form. So we get the customer input field and use type ahead to clear its value. And similarly for the movie text box. And for the list of movies, we use the empty method to clear its list items. So these three lines will clear the form. But we also have to reset our view model. So VM equals a new object. And we need to initialize its movie IDs to an empty array. And finally, we need to reset the state of the form in terms of its validation. So this validate method returns a validator object, validator. We can get that and here call validator dot reset form. So this will reset the form in terms of its validation. 